Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well this is the long awaited video of making the Christmas album. It's a mini album that we're using paper bags from the Dollar Tree with. And I hope that it has the wait hasn't been too long but today's the day. We're going to be using some red paper that matches and some green paper that matches. And I also bought this I bought it at a garage sale. It's a paper kit that is supposed to be for a um, uh, scrapbook, but it has all the colors in it that match, so I think that this is going to work really well for my project, and it's got some 3D embellishments that will work as well. So I'm excited about that. The first thing we're going to be doing is working on our bags, and to do that, you're going to need either a, a bone folder, or I use a comb sometimes, or, oh uh, well, hold on now, I'll get you the bone folders that I use. Sorry if I'm in the picture, don't plan on it. I really like this bone folder from Fiskars. It's very inexpensive and I like the handle on it. It works well for me. This is a Teflon bone folder and it also is nice because of the length of it. I can really work it well, but those are the two that work best for me. I recommend either one pretty much the same. I'm going to be using the dreaded ATG today because it makes things go much much faster and we're going for speed on this. If you don't have one of these you can certainly use a small tape runner or wet glue for this portion but other than that I would really recommend double sided tape and wet glue. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut our bags so that they're all the same length uh, well, yeah, well, I want to do that first. And the reason I like to do that is I like to make sure once we know how much we're going to lose, because we're not going to count this piece right here, once we take that off, then we need to have a ruler to show us exactly how long our paper is going to be without that. So we really need a 6-inch piece, and again, we're not going to count that. So if we have six inches, I'm going to go this way, so I know it's roughly seven and a quarter, so I'm going to cut off an inch, so I have a six and a quarter inch piece. So we're going to cut an inch off of each bag. If you don't have a paper trimmer, just make sure your, your cuts are straight and that you don't have any um, any uneven cuts. You know, you want to use a ruler to make sure that your pieces are exactly the same. I'm going to assume that all of my bags are the same length. I'm going to put these ones side by side and see if that's an inch. Yeah, that is an inch. So both, the, so it looks like our bags are the same size, and we're going to only use six of them. The next thing we want to do is you see how these these bottoms come flap comes up. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to take our ATG and we're going to run a couple rows of glue, and then we're going to really do a nice job of folding it down like that. Next one. Oh, went the wrong way. That's because I'm left-handed. Things don't go the same way for left-handed people sometimes. I'm losing my mind. Okay. I'm trying to do this very quickly, which is not a smart idea when you're doing a project like this. You need to just take your time. So I'm going to slow down now and make sure everything's glued down well. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to fold our bags. You're going to take the piece that you just um, glued down and you're going to fold it. I'm going to make sure I do this the way I want it. 
you're going to fold it back on the bag itself. So you're going to fold it backwards like this, making sure that it's straight. Then you're going to use your bone folder and really make sure that that is really well folded down. And I do that with all the edges at this point because it's going to come in handy. I watch May May make one of these bags, bag, um, a long time ago and that was the one tip that she gave. She was adamant that you need to make sure that you use your bone folder and really make sure that all of your folds are nice and folded down and that everything is straight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our two um, our two folded pieces. See like this? We're going to make those so that they're a pocket. And then our bags open on either end. But we want to make sure that we're only going to glue the bottom and the two sides, not this top, because you want to be able to put something in that. So this is when the fine tip applicator comes in really handy, because you're just going to want to go on that edge and along the bottom. and then up this edge. I'm going to put a little glue on both because I don't have much glue coming out of this. Ooh, got a little glue on me. What else is new there? Got a little edge coming up there too. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to line your two bags up like that and make sure that they are completely straight with each other. I have the best luck doing it by looking at it straight on. And then you're going to squeeze them together so that the bottoms are tight and so are your sides. Nice and well glued shut. If you don't think that your glue is holding really well right away, you could take clothes pins and put them on these sides. Not a big deal. Okay. That's those two. We're going to do the same thing with these two. So get it out. That's better. Okay. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to turn these two bags and you're going to put them together like that. Squeeze them so that the bags are well adhered to each other. Make sure the bottom is well adhered. And um, we'll go over these with the bone folder in a little bit, but for right now, we're just making sure that our edges are tight together. And don't forget, you're going to be covering all of this with other paper, so it's not like it's going to be uh, a horrible thing if you get a little bit of glue on the on your bags or you know anyway you're not going to have it's not going to be a horrible thing if if your bags are a little bit weird okay next step is that we're going to be gluing our bags together so that we have uh, an actual book Okay, I decided, I forgot that I wanted to do this on these albums, but in my last album I had double pockets, so I wanted to make these ones single pockets, and I'll show you how to do that. It's um, I should have done it before I put them together, but I didn't, so you're kind of going to see this in uh, more of a longer fashion than they normally would be. What you're going to do is you're going to take your bag that you've already glued together like this. You're going to take your scissors and you're going to run the, the, uh, the length of the front edge of your bag like that on the top and the bottom. You want to be as, as careful as you can be all the way to the edge. Then you're going to fold it back. Now you see these papers? 
you're going to need to do the same thing when you're going to cut and it doesn't matter that if you're not all the way to the inside edge on that but you're going to cut um, those papers all the way to the bottom like that See, so what that did is that basically made it so that those papers whoops, it needs to rip a little more those pa papers can now fold on themselves I got a little tear again okay so what you're going to do is now that you've cut that you're going to put a little bit of glue on your edge here it doesn't matter if you're a little sloppy with it and you're going to fold that one over. What that did is that eliminated one of your pockets. I saw May May do this and I liked it because when you have that double pocket it just makes it really um, bulky I'll say and it makes it so that the papers slide around in there and I already had a nightmare with my glue gun so we'll call that a uh, done deal Give, gave up on that little bugger already and make sure that when you seal down this page you're going to seal as much of it as possible you want to make sure that you cover the whole page so then you're going to take this piece and very carefully take it right back over that front piece and now instead of having two pockets you only have one I'll show you that one more time. I need to make sure I get more glue on my edge here. Okay, so then we're going to do it to the next bag. So you're going to cut the bag along the bottom edge like that. And I'm trying to make sure I'm right on the seam if I can be. If I'm not, it's not horribly crucial because we're going to have so many pages under here to cover it. It's not going to be that big a deal. And same with the top. You're going to cover. Then in the inside we're going to cut these pieces that are kind of just loose we're going to cut those all the way down to the bottom edge and of course I didn't cut it all the way to the bottom edge again that one is and that one is another snip Okay. Then again what you're going to do is you're going to fold these down, put some glue on it. You'd think when I have a million things of glue that I would not run out of glue all the time, but I always seem to run out of glue when I'm on video, don't I? Does that seem like that's the way it works? So you're going to hold that piece down, you're going to bring this piece up, and you're just going to do that. Then the next part is we're going to glue down the top page. I'm going to get a different glue. Yet another glue. Oh, finally a glue that comes out. It's a miracle. And I want to make sure again that I cover all the edges and make sure that the center's covered everything because this is going to be a full page. Okay. You're going to take that top page and lay it back down as cleanly as you can. Now I've got glue coming out of everything. And so that turned that into one pocket instead of two. I'm going to use tear tape from this point on because I want my album to stay together really well. So these are the two that I already have and so then I'm going to put tear tape on Oops, got a little rip on my paper. Good thing it's going to be hidden by the other paper. And you really want to make sure your ends are down if you're using tear tape, you know, your edges. 
and the best thing to take tear tape the uh, the um, the liner paper or whatever you call it off is with a pokey tool. Piece, and then I'm going to do the ends of my book. just to be on the safe side. You can't have too much glue when you're putting a book together because you want to make sure that your album is really sturdy and well constructed with, you know, a lot of a lot of glue. I'm going to put some wet glue on here because um, I find wet glue makes it so that I can move my uh, anything you have on tear tape it allows you to move it a little bit so you, it gives you a little bit of time to move your project Let's see how I did that time that's pretty good Put those like that and I'm going to put tear tape on this one. more glue, wet glue on it, just to give us some wiggle room, if we can. So I've made my book, and everything is dry. Obviously you knew I made the book, because you watched me. So now I'm going to start laying my papers in the inside. I put some tear tape on there, and my goal is to make it so that I can move it a little bit. So I am going to add a little bit of wet glue as well so that in case I do have a foul up, I can move it. And I'm going to, on these center pieces, I'm just going to lay them in like that. I'm going to decorate those after the fact. So, you know, don't don't be thinking that I just put in a big red piece of paper that's going to just be boring nothing. I, I got a plan. Well, I don't really have a plan yet, but I'm going to have a plan. And then this is going to go on this side. Let's move it up a little bit. turn the whole book so I can see it. I'm better doing things from this kind of an angle because then I can see where everything is, you know, my top and bottom side, the whole thing. So this will be a page that will fit a full-size photo. Then this will be a journaling spot. Then, whoop, we'll go to this page and I'm going to get rid of that sticky just by adding the papers on it because once you add the papers it covers up that spot that's sticking everything to it. I'm going to do the red red center spot first because it's easier. Okay.
sure of that. And then turn that sideways again. Here at the top, I have some glue that I don't like. It's very shiny. You can't really tell from where you're at, but I can really see it. I want to get rid of that if I can. Okay. So those are those two pages. So then on to the next pages. And these ones I'm going to be doing in this polka dot with the green. And then these pieces will be in the middle. We'll tell you in a second how I came up with my paper sizes. I forgot to tell you that and I wrote it all down everything but forgot to tell you all about it so I'll do that in just a second. As soon as I have all of these glued down. Jeez, I completely forgot to talk. I, I was in the middle of a thought and then all of a sudden it just went by the wayside and I was like, oh, I'll just tell them that in a second. But then I forgot to say what I was going to tell you. Jeez, I'm losing my mind. Okay. And our last two pages will be these red ones. Uh, before I go any further, I will tell you, though, what I did. I measured my pages, and my pens my papers are six and a quarter inches wide, and then they're four and a half inches tall. So I took an eighth of an inch off for my red layer. So this would be six and an eighth inches wide by four and three eighths high. And then I took another eighth of an eight inch off for the snowflake paper. So um, that's how I did it with all the papers. And I'll put that in the, the notes. But you're, you're going to need to measure your bags because if your bags are a little bit different than mine in um, you know length and width, your your um, dimensions will be all off. So you'll want to make sure that before you finish or before you cut that you've checked to make sure that yours is right. After you do this, these those books become pretty sturdy. I mean the not those white papers, the the white uh, paper bags that I bought at Walmart. Those were not sturdy at all. But these really have held up. Are, are a lot sturdier than uh, the, pa the other ones. I like these a lot better. They're easier to work with too. Okay, so those, let's look at our book so far. We have these two pages, then we have these two pages. Still have a little glue on that, and that doesn't make me happy. Guess it'll roll off. And then we have these ones. And then I just need to decorate the front and the back. Now the front, I do have this idea for it. I thought what I would do is put this in and I put uh, double-sided foam tape on this piece so it'll pop up and it will be higher than the other piece. And then this is just going to line behind everything. So that's my plan for the front so far and then I'm going to decorate it more after that. But right now... I think I'll just put some tear tape on this. I won't need a lot of tear tape because this is going to just be under everything and shouldn't be something that will get any kind of wear and tear. So I'll just put a few pieces on. I'm going to run a piece of this, the length of the album. The thing that's nice about this tear tape when you do this is it makes it just that much sturdier because it gives you that added tape right there. And then I have this 
green ribbon that I'm going to use. Hopefully it's long enough. I think it is. Then I'm just going to very carefully make sure that my ribbon is on the tape. And that takes care of that. And then that's how much we have left. That ought to be plenty. Then we're going to put down this piece just as um, background. Okay. So I'm going to turn this sideways so I can make sure I center this piece as best I can. Okay, there's that. Then I'm going to put this in, hopefully, exactly where it sits. Now it's just a matter of deciding what I want in the inside and of the box and then doing the back. So we're ready to do the back and I'm just going to I'll turn it this way because I'm better doing it that way. I'm going to say that about another 50 times probably. Probably before I'm done I'll say it another 50 times. Then I put the front on and then I I think I showed you that part and then I added these little corners and these stickers came with the set so I thought what I would do is put the Christmas tree right there and hopefully this Christmas sticker will stick right well I was going to put there's a little wee snowflake that I liked that I thought might look good under it. Maybe I'll do a couple of them. I don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal if it's not really attached because I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to put the, the Christmas sticker up on top of it. Let me put that one there. Let me put my Christmas put that up in that corner like that. Whoop. Needs to go down a little bit, I think. So that's the front. Then I also did this, I um, had this piece that I cut and put in there. So then we just need to put something on this page. more of these little corner pieces. I'll stick one there and one right there. Then I need to do something on the red page here right there. Traditions on this side. Then the very last thing we have to do is figure out something for this back page. Okay, so this is the back. I just put this sticker on it, and then I thought I would add a few more of these little um, embellishments that came with this set. I think I'll put that. 
air. I'm not sure if it'll stay because the wish is so high on it. I mean, maybe maybe a couple of them will come off, which wouldn't make me unhappy. Put that right there. So that's the back cover. I thought about putting, I'm going to do one of these, just raise it up on a little piece of foam tape. The back will be done. I think the front's done. Put that up like that. Okay. Now all we need to do are the inside pieces. Now I've already done a couple of these so that you can see what they look like, but I am going to still decorate them. And I'm going to decorate them just a little bit. Hopefully I'm still in camera. And all I did was I um, put the ribbon, I took the ribbon and I pushed it through like that and I pulled it far enough that I could weave the other two ends into that hole and then I pulled them through. This is slippery. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to cut the edges. Our cards are going to go inside. And I'm just going to take a little bit of glue stick and put some of it on here so that our Snowflake stays where we want it. Put it on there. That's one of them. And here's another green one. And last but not least, I have this big family traditions. I thought that would look nice. That'll be that one. I'm going to put a little glue dot on the tops of these to keep them in place so they don't come off. Because you never know when you have um, ribbon like this, it's easy for them to un, what do you call it, unthread themselves, we're going to call it. So all I'm going to do is put a little bit dot kind of underneath that loop so that we can keep it in place. It's inside, hopefully you can see that, it's inside the loop. That way hopefully it won't end up sticking to my book. I'm going to put a, a little piece of ribbon behind it just to make sure just put a little teeny tiny piece right there and snip it off. That way it won't come off and it won't stick to anything. That's our first one. So there are our three inserts. I'm going to put a green one in this slot because the paper in this area is mostly red, so we'll just put the green one in there. Then I'll put the red one in this one. Put the green one back here. Then all I need to do is slide my papers in that I'm going to put inside my folders. So let's put a green one in this bag. You could put more than one if you wanted to. I'm just going to put one in each bag. And I made these um, six by 
four so that they would be able to uh, have a photo on them. They're a little bit bigger than six by four actually. I made them just a little bit longer um, so that they you could pull them out because I didn't think that I wanted to do a um, I didn't want to do pull tabs on them because they would stick out. So let's go from front to back with our bag. Okay, so here's our front. It um, has some 3D elements including this uh, frame. Uh, the reason I like that because I really covered the inside of that with the fun foam and then I made it so that everything in here will be protected by that layer of frame. Then inside here we have one photo page. Put that back in. Then you open it up and there's another photo frame. A full 4x6 photo will fit in both of these. Then you have a journaling spot here plus a journaling spot there. Another journaling spot here. Go to the next page. You have two inserts for paper bags there. You have a spot for a photo here. A journaling spot. Another journaling spot. Journaling spot. Photo two photos to go in here then you have this page plus you have this for journaling and that for journaling and the memories and then that's our back cover and there are there's another page in there there's our back cover and then the ribbons gonna hold it all together it really is a nice sturdy little album. It'll take you a few hours to do. I would say set aside a couple nights to do it because you might get a little frustrated at some point when you're doing it. But um, all in all, it's inexpensive because you use those bags and it's a sweet little book. And I think any friend of yours or family member would love to get it. There's my little tied ribbon. I hope you enjoyed this and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.